Hello, how's it going? Hope you're doing well. Today, going back to Tempered Steel, now that Historic Anthology 5 is out. Before I get into the deck, the usual YouTube stuff, like, comment, and subscribe if you can. Thank you so much for doing that. And all the information about the deck list and timestamps are in the description, as always. So, last week, I played Tempered Steel in Best of One, just to get a feel for the deck. And you know what? It worked out all right. A lot of small artifact creatures, Tempered Steel at the top end, smashed down the opponent. What more could you ask for? Well, we got more. We got Vault Scourge. And we got Court Homunculus in the Anthology 5. Both of these cards went into the deck very easily. We took out some weaker cards like uh, the Inquisitive Puppet. You know, cards that weren't really that impactful. And now I think the overall power level is that much higher for this deck. The overall build of the deck is pretty much the same. We have a lot of small artifact creatures like the Ornithopter, Bomac Courier, and Ginger Brute. We also have the very impactful artifact creatures like Scrap Heap Scrounger that is great on recursion, and then the Stone Coil Serpent, which is just an all-star. To enable all of this, Tempered Steel giving everything plus two, plus two, and the Steel Overseer to put plus one, plus one counters on everything. The other change I made to the deck was adding two more Spire of Industries. I think if you're serious about this deck, you probably need to have the full four of, of the Spire of Industry before I had Aether Hub, and it just didn't work quite the same. So I went up to four Spires. I think it's going to help quite a bit. We also have a sideboard now. My friend uh, advised me to put in some Thought Seizes. Maybe we run into blue-white control. It could be good to have Thought Seizes on turn two or turn three before they can hit us with the Wrath of God, for example. Shadow Sphere is a one-up just to give us a little bit of lifelink in those games where our opponents are coming out of the gate really hot. Glass Casket, really great artifact removal card, which you could probably argue should be in the main board, but for now I have it in the side. Great for removal in those matchups against like Gruel Aggro. Relic of Progenitus, another new card from Historic Anthology 5. Originally, I had Tormod's Crypt in this slot, but I wanted to try out Relic of Progenitus. I think it's a pretty solid overall graveyard hate card. Maybe I'll go back to Tormod's Crypt after playing with the uh, Relic for a little bit. We'll see. And then a couple of Planeswalkers, Gideon Blackblade and Karn Scion of Urza, just, again, for the grindier matchups when we might be running into a lot of board wipes and the such. So that's the deck I think it looks pretty cool. I'm gonna run it through some games and see how they turn out. See you over there. All right, Tempered Steel in best of three, historic. Gonna try to make it work. I will say, I am a little bit concerned for the deck. Opening hand, too many lands. Let's throw it back. Oh, this hand looks a little bit more competent. Let's get rid of the Court Homunculus. I might need the Bomac Courier to refill in a few minutes. Let's lead on the Bomac Courier, get some cards under it. So my concern right now is with two cards that now exist in the format as of recent, uh, Prismari Command and Coligan's Command now. Both of these cards are really going to hose this deck if they become more popular. Uh, both of the cards destroy target artifact and deal two damage to a, to a creature or player, any target I think. Let's do that. Let's put out the snake on two. And yeah, we, we attack for zero. Yeah, so if that becomes... If those two cards become very popular, you know, those two-for-ones are really going to hurt this deck. If You know, in this situation, the opponent could... Wow, the Stone Coil Serpent thankfully dodges that because it has protection from multicolor. But if that was like a Court Homunculus on the field, they could destroy the Court Homunculus, deal two damage to the Ornithopter, and things are not looking very good. Okay, I think I'm going to take the risk and try putting the All That Glitters on the Stone Coil Serpent. If they have a shock, I'm going to be a little bit sad. They have a brainstorm. They're probably digging for a shock. But I think I have to take the risk in the position that I'm in. If I can load up this Stone Coil Serpent, I'll be very happy. Okay, it's a 5-5. Five, five. Yeah, let's just play the field. A little bit of a shame that our opponent was able to get rid of the Bowman Courier. But that's okay. I'm going to hold the Ornithopter back, just in case they have a Sprite Dragon. I don't know. <laughs> I guess I shouldn't always be attacking with my zero twos. 2s All of our cards are on the table right now, literally. Um, deck doesn't really hold anything back, so... If your opponent has good plays against it, I think it's very transparent and... Yeah. So, there's the <laughs> Sprite Dragon. A little curious that they didn't play it out last turn. They might have gotten it off of the Brainstorm. So Tempered Steel here would be pretty good. Scrap Heap Scrounger's alright. Yeah. We'll attack. Oh, I should have played it out. Dumb. 
I'm missing one point of damage. If I lose this game by one damage, I will eat my hat. Yeah. Okay, expressive iteration, not a big deal. We also have the Blink Moth Nexus over there in the lands, just in case we need to, you know, get a little bit of extra damage in. Also really cool, if we turn on the Blink Moth Nexus, it'll actually pump up the Stone Coil Serpent with the all that glitters. So, nice little, you know, bonus effect there. What am I bringing in against Is It Prowess? Good question. I don't hate the Shadow Spear. I think I'll bring in one of those. And I'm not sure, maybe the glass casket should come in because those sprite dragons can get really out of control and then I can't do anything about them. So I think those are all fine cards. I'm probably going to be taking out court homunculuses just because they're, you know, shock fodder and maybe a ginger brute. We'll try something like that. All right, game two. That was also on a mulligan, so pretty neat that we were able to steal that one. Opening hand looks all right. Yeah, if we can get the Shadow Spear on the Scrap Heap, gain a lot of life. Spire of Industry is a good card there. How hard do I want to go? Do I want to put out Ornithopter and the Ginger Brute, or just lead out on the Shadow Spear? and play for the next couple turns. Let's put a, yeah, Shadow Spear. Yeah, I think we can put out the Ornithopter, just in case they have a Sprite Dragon. If they want to shock it, they have to shock it now. It's gonna be a little awkward for them to do it next turn if they also have a Sprite Dragon. So. Now I can try equipping the Shadow Spear onto the Ornithopter, making a very threatening 1 3 life linker. But I think I probably prefer just getting out the Scrap Heap Scrounger. Okay. Hopefully, they don't have something to exile. I guess Pillar of Flame does exile, but it's sorcery speed. So, not going to be such a big deal against our Scrounger. Now it plays. Okay, expressive iteration. If we can get the Shadow Spear onto the Scrap Heap Scrounger, I think that'll be a pretty good situation. Making this a 4 3 lifelink. Yeah. That seems good. And you know what? Let's get out a Ginger Brew. We'll hold back with the Ornithopter. Gain a little bit of life. Seems alright. A tempered steel off the top would be just remarkable. Brazen borrower. Sure. Okay, so that's it's a little scary. Vault Scourge is gonna be cool later on down the line, but I think right now it's not the best. Um do I want to equip the Ginger Brute and attack, making it unblockable? I don't think I need to do that. I think what I'm going to do is just play out the Scrap Heap Scrounger, give it the Shadow Blade, Shadow Spear, and pass. Storming Entity, definitely one of the stronger cards for the opponent in this matchup. It's going to make things very difficult for, for me. Opponent played out a Spire Bluff Canal. A little bit of an issue with their red mana over there. Okay, opponent's getting frisky. Hitting for three. Making me think they're going to have some kind of follow-up. No. Well, Tempered Steel is one heck of a card. Do I think they have a Spell Pierce? I'm going to assume that they do. I'm going to put out the land. Shock it in, just in case. They could have another Brazen Borrower. That would be pretty annoying. Shock on the Ginger Brute. Sure. Okay, Ginger Brute down. 
Tempered Steel Resolves. <sighs> Interesting. Okay, let's not be too greedy. I was thinking about playing out the Ginger Brew, but I still feel like they might have another Brazen Borrower. I think I can attack with both, though. Okay, so are they going to chump block the Ornithopter? Oh, please chump block the Ornithopter. They didn't. Hmm. Now I kind of want to put out the Vault Scourge. Yeah. Go Vault Scourge. And we're going to pay... Yep, we'll pay the normal fee for it. No reason to lose life. Is it such a, a common deck these days? I find with a lot of my historic videos, I'm always entering, uh, is it Prowess or is it Aggro? Is it Phoenix in some capacity on the channel? Definitely think they should be running some number of Prismari commands in the sideboard if you know these artifacts start becoming more popular. Hmm. So what does that mean? Soulscar Mage, pretty annoying because it can shrink down our creatures and make things very, very tough going forward. They only have access to one red mana though. So I feel like attacking with the Vault Scourge is probably a little bit, a little bit careless. But I think I I can get in with the scrap heap scrounger. Ooh, really good one. So what did they hit? Did they hit? They hit the scrap heap scrounger and not the shadow spear. I think you were supposed to definitely hit the shadow spear there, bud. Okay. So next, do I want to put out a stone coil serpent for five, or do I want to put it out for three and hold up the scrap heap scrounger? I think I want this out for five. Yeah. So outside of another Abraid or a Brazen Borer, I think that Stone Coil is going to give them quite a bit of issues. Quite a few issues. Ooh. Ooh, 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 ooh. I really wish they tapped out a little bit there. Okay, let's try to play out the all the glitters on the Ornithopter. If they destroy something, I'd rather, I'd prefer it to be the Ornithopter. They did have another abrade. Okay. Resolve. That's fine. There was no avoiding that. So that's the downside of the all the glitters. It's very easy to get two for one. Now, if I put this on the Stone Cold Serpent, it'll become an 8-8. Eight, eight. Can they block it effectively? They will lose their entire board if they don't play anything else, and they will be able to kill it. But I think that's probably fine. I have to assume they probably have another spell to pump up the Soulscar Mage and the Stormwing Entity. But I'm in a position where I have to attack. Shock, that's the, the best. One of the best. Still, they're gonna lose the Stormwing Entity I think I'm killing. So argument for killing the Soul Scar Mage because it is so annoying, but they can't have that many more direct damage spells, right? Right. Let's get rid of the entity. Entity is a big problem. And I may as well use my mana efficiently. I'll put out a 3-3 Ginger Brute. We still have the Scrap Heap Scrounger that we can put into play at their next end step. Pillar of Flame, maybe I should have gotten rid of the Soul Scar Mage. Alright. You know what? Them throwing two cards at the Scrap Heap Scrounger is super fine. Alright. So we put this on the Vault Scourge. The Vault Scourge goes in for four. May as well play out the Ornithopter. And now we have a Scrap Heap Scrounger coming in as a five-four. 
on their end step. They gotta hit really. Uh, the, the expressive iteration is a great draw off the top, but they gotta hit well on it. Okay, land to play out for the turn. That's fine. And a crackling Drake. Well, they hit well, to say the least. Goodbye, Ginger Brute. Okay, what do we want to see? All the glitters. All that glitters, baby. So, um, one, two, three, four, five, six. The Vault Scourge will go up to a 10-10. I'm fine with that. Did we crash in with everything? Yeah. Oh man, I love the trample on Shadow Spear. It just makes things so awkward for the opponents. Next one. All right. So this is gonna be game three technically with Tempered Steel, but it's actually game two in this video. The last game that I just played was literally like 40 to 50 minutes long. It was such a huge grind of a game and we lost. Yay. It was, and it was a tough loss, but I don't want to put it in the middle of this video because I think it's just going to be too much to have right slam in the middle of a, a, you know, this league. I want the games to be, you know, 10 to 15 minutes each, not one taking up 75% of it. So I'm going to put it up as his own little video as like a one-off game. If you care to see what happened in that one. Otherwise, we're going to just keep trucking along. We are going to play against some elves. Our opponent mulliganed. Do you think they trade for the Bomac Courier? I don't think so. Let's put up the Bomac Courier, get a card under it. There's no way they block here. They already, they mulled down. I don't think they block, no. Don't want to draw any more lands. The In the game that I cut, lands were a little bit of an issue just drawing too many it's not elves oh and oh that's a really good card to draw let's get out the blink moth and we will pay this way because it's only one life that way now i can't attack next turn tempered steel is going to come down and we're going to start gaining some life back from this vault scourge and then on the next turn we'll have a five five life linker in the air sounds all right to me as long as they don't have decisive denial to fight, our Vault Scourge will be pretty good. Boom. I'd be okay with like a Steel Leaf Champion here follow up. That's fine. Scavenging is. That's fine. Yeah. Okay. Uh, I think I'm, I shock it in. I'm going to have to shock it in eventually, so. Pay. One more life. Oh no, they could have a decisive denial. If they have the decisive denial here, it's huge. Gross. That's gross. Oh, you dirty dog opponent. All right. Gain one. I'm not going to block with the Vault Scourge, that's for sure. What a rude fella. Take seven. Go down to six, go down to five later. Live on the edge. Okay. Game wants me to have tempered steel. We attack. Gain some life. Play out another Bomac career. This Vault Scourge has to go all the way. They're flooding out. That's probably a good thing for us. So there's the Steely Champion. Sure. Am I okay double blocking? Not yet. Yuck. It'd be real nice if we had a little bit more on board, if we had that other Tempered Steel on board. So do I attack with a Vault Scourge, gain five, go up to eight? Yeah, okay. 
Go, Vault Scourge. You're the hero, you ugly, ugly monster. Okay. What does this mean? Do they have a way to pump? What was that? Just pushing damage? Okay. I don't agree with that. Alright, we're we're cool now. Good game. We have the Blink Moth Nexus back, it's another 5-5. Five, five. They that wasn't happening. So definitely want the glass caskets for this matchup, and I think I also want the Shadow Spear. I'm not hundred percent on Shadow Spear yet. Uh and glass casket, where did it go? There it is. So what are they gonna have? I think all that glitters is probably okay. They they definitely have decisive denial and fight cards, but that's about it. The Scrap Heap Scroungers might be a little bit bad in this matchup because, you know, they can't block well and they're not going to be getting in through 4-4s four and 5-4s. So I think I probably want to go down a, some number of them. Maybe one Homunculus, one Gingerbread, something like that. Now, do I want the Shadow Spear? Is it actually going to benefit me? Yes, I think it's good enough to have. That life gain could throw things off. Obviously, the Vault Scourge gaining life there was the key to the victory. So, And the, the opponent mulliganing hard and flooding out a little bit. Those things definitely helped. But we don't focus on that. We focus on other things. Delusion, for example. <laughs> Man, that, that last game, I don't know if you, you're going to end up watching it. That last game with the it was mono red artifacts and it just took it out of me it was <laughs> i probably shouldn't have played it out as much as i did but i got committed partially uh halfway through i got committed and yeah here i am delirious now Ooh, what a draw okay so sacred foundry down we get out the court homunculus we get out the ornithopter and we're going to be taking a little bit of damage next turn more from the Godless Shrine, but I think if we can get the Steel Overseer on the field and they don't have a way to fight... Good, good days. And then the Tempered Steel eventually to follow up. Sure. Garrick's Harbinger is going to be good. It's going to hit us quite a bit. And they're up to Collected Company mana now, so... We've got to be real careful. Steel Overseer is such an interesting card. It's such a high upside, but such a, a vulnerable card. Yeah. Let's see. Doesn't doesn't take <laughs> much to, to kill a Steel Overseer. You'd think the, the Overseers would be a little bit hardier, right? Okay, let's take four. I guess land is going to be the best thing. It's not a land. Darn. So, I guess we get rid of the old growth troll. I don't know, maybe the Garks Harbinger was actually a bigger threat. Its ability to add a card to hand is really good. So good, in fact, I think I'm just going to throw the Ornithopter underneath it this time. And here comes the Steel Overseer. Not Steel Overseer. S Steely Champion. No. Yeah, I guess Reclamation Sages are going to be cards that people are going to play. If we don't draw the land here, I think it's we just move on. Okay, we drew the land, but it's a it's a bad one. Um, I'm going to put this out for zero. It'll come in as a two-two. Pump up the Homunculus to at least a four-four. We can challenge the old growth troll and the Harbinger. If they have another Rex Sage for the Tempered Steel, though, they don't. Okay, but now we have a new problem. 
Problem after problem after problem with this game. Holy moly. No, I guess we kill this. Alright, we can play out everything. Nothing very effectively, but... <laughs> hey, we, we build a bit of a board that maybe we can stop something. Nice. Good cards from the opponent. Oh. No choice. Oh, we just die. They have one pump. So they pump on the old growth troll, kill both of our serpents, or they could pump on the Rex Sage and kill the Ornithopter. Yep. Well. Okay, we get to go to a game three at the very least and be on the play. Alright, gonna be real tough with those Reclamation Sages. It's basically cheating to put a card like that in your deck against our deck. Okay. At least we're, this time we're not murdering ourselves <laughs> with, uh, with our lands. Having the fast lands is so much better than the shock lands. Okay, Pelt Collector not letting wear out this time. So do I want to just eat the Pelt Collector? Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. No, I don't. But I will attack him with the Homunculus. I don't think I'm attacking with the Bowmack Courier. I think I need it for a draw later. But, then again, how many cards am I really going to get under the Bomac Courier? They're going to slam something here, and this Bomac Courier is only ever going to get in for one. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Well, that's a 5-5. Five five. I think I should have put it at the Blink Moth Nexus there. That was a mistake. Can you put out something big that I can... Oh, you rude, rude monster. Man. Rex Sage, like, it's so, so amazing. Like, it's a card I haven't seen in lists for so long. I can't... I don't think it's in my list. And now, now we get Rex Saged when we, we decide to start doing artifact stuff. I don't think the artifact deck is going to be that common. I don't know what else other people are worried about. Uh, I think I'm going to just cycle the Bomac Courier now. Could just kill the Rex Sage. No, this card's going to be more valuable to me than the Sacred Foundry and the, killing the Rex Sage. Ooh, yeah. Okay, it might be all on the Blink Moth Nexus. Okay, Ronus. Not a concern. Attack with both. No. That's fine. Land here's okay. So I want to make sure my lands are tapping properly. How bad is the crackback? If they have a 4-4 here, then they can hit me for 10. That's not bad. Let's get in. Okay. So close. Could you imagine if I still had that Vault Scourge? Oh. What a world. Oh, right. Pumps that. 11. 
Only with the Ronus. Oh, no, here we go. Okay, I don't I don't know how I get out of this. Not with an ornithopter, that's for sure. Why'd I why'd I tap a man? <laughs> Just thinking um ornithopter's gonna cost me at least one. It's a good card, it should cost one. Okay. We're we dead. We're dead. Hang on, am I dead if I attack here? So I can block I block he pumps. Yeah, I'm just dead. Uh, no attack. Can't attack. I'm gonna have to throw the Blink Moth under something. Oh no, do they have a decisive... Last card is a decisive denial. That's super dead now. Alright, opponent. Good draws. It, it worked out. <sighs> Tough. Tough one. Not even gonna bother blocking. Okay, next game. All right, next one with Tempered Steel. Hope it goes a little bit better. Unfortunately, last game against the Mono Green Stompy, or Sim it's technically Simic Stompy. Yeah, hey, that looks all right. Sure. Bomac Courier. I really wish I could have got some Canadian sleeves. Hopefully they go back on the store one day. Bring it back, wizards. Come on, don't be cowards. Well, guess what we're doing? We're going to hit him for three, and then we're going to hit him for a little bit more. All right, let's go. Let's go. <laughs> Raid, rude. Okay, we still get in for six. Next turn we get in for ten. Who's playing with Braid Bane Board? It's insane. Insane to me. Oh. Alright. GG's. So that's 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 the way games should go. <laughs> Perfect. So what is our opponent playing with this Into the North? I saw one deck list with that card and I can't remember what it was. I have no idea. What do I have to be prepared for here? Thoughtseize? Thoughtseize? I feel like all that glitters is probably going to be bad. And let's take out a Gingy Brute. It's pretty cool. If they have the Abrade again, I'll not be very happy about that, but... Gotta, gotta try it, right? Let's bait, let's bait <laughs> something. I don't know what we're baiting there. A mystical denial? No, mystical dispute? That's not what it's called. Oh man, I've been playing too long now, I'm forgetting the card. The one that puts it back on the top of your deck, you can tell me. <laughs> oh, they missed a land. Oh. Well, we're gonna take advantage of that. That's fine. Let's load up the board. All right, you need something big here, bud. Oh, hold up. <laughs> hold up. Oh, tempered steel. <laughs> How? Okay. 
how am I supposed to put a, put them on? Hey, hold up. <laughs> how can I put them on double red anger of the gods when they have a hinterland harbor and a snow covered island on the board? That's some Batman level deception, and I don't appreciate it. Oh, come, come on! I'm so, <laughs> I'm so tilted. Oh, he's not taking any chances either. Just put four damage on the homunculus straight up. All right. So the miracle, a miracle just happened for our opponent. Good for you, bud. <sighs> Nightpack Ambusher. Okay, uh, alright. I, yeah. Uh... So, the Simic Stompy deck, or Simic Flash deck, has merged with the Is It Opus deck. And now we get this. Oh. Alright, well, that was a lot of lands. What can you do? Game three, we're gonna, we're gonna wreck them. Now what we we know what we're up against. Is it worth it to even bring in the Relic of Progenitus to stop the flashback on the mag, Magma Opus? Maybe like two? I don't want to go all four. One Thought Seize. I don't think I need Thought Seize. Necess ah, maybe Thought Seize is necessary to try to get Anger of the Gods. I'm angry. I'm angry about that. I wouldn't be so angry if I saw it coming, but... <laughs> <sighs> Alright. Gonna hurt ourselves a bit. And put ourselves into another position where a... Turn three, Anger of the Gods is very devastating. But that's the kind of magic we're playing right now. You see the problem here? <laughs> and Anger of the Gods is going to exile, which is... A whole nother problem. None of my creatures can get above it. I still think I have to go out. Yeah, this hurts. This is gonna be real bad. So they definitely have the mana for the anger. They snapped it off pretty quickly last time. I have a feeling. Oh! Well, that's... That's bad, but technically not as bad. I'm so happy they printed Mizzix's Mastery. Like, it's just one of those cards that feels so good, right? All right. Alright, gotta focus. Nothing, eh? Well, they can't ambush us. Not yet. Next turn they can. Mm, no, it looks like they're short on green. I think it's green, green. Okay. That's fine. Put out Scrapper. Pass and hope. Sure. Why did it have to be Nisa? This guy's just like playing the most above curve cards, huh? I guess that's a way, that's an approach. 
Alright. So we return Scrap Heap Scrounger to the field. It can't do a whole lot, but... Yeah, still not doing a whole lot. Technically, those lands are still colorless. Oh, nice. That's that's a lot of removal. Okay, let's put this out for five. And you know what? Let's throw out the Ornithopter just in case we hit a Tempered Steel next turn. The Stone Coil Serpent's going to be quite the blocker for a little while. Hey, Time Warp, that's fun. The land fights for us. She's going to ultimate next turn. Hey, Time Warp, that's fun. Nightpack Ambusher as well. Oh, goodness gracious. What happened to Honest Magic? Huh? Can't even find it in best of three. Just alt, come on. Really? Alright. Oh, it makes a it makes a three three, that's reasonable. You enabled this little Nisa. You problematic girl. Alright. Well, give the hearts to the opponent and move on with our lives. Next one. Alright. So I think I got one more left in me. It's been quite the grind. We're one and two. Not doing the best. But I don't think that's the fault of the deck. I honestly feel like uh, that both games, the Simic one could have been a little bit closer. They just kind of had our number with weird interaction that didn't really see coming and then that last deck that, that flash deck is probably like the strongest deck right now it's just nobody's playing it because there's so many rares in it the thing is insane Elish Norn gotta be aware of that okay Skyclay Shade for the opponent sure well since we know Elish Norn is imminent Let's get out the Steel Overseer and try to get our fellas up above two. Since the opponent went first, I think that might be asking too much. But we'll see. Remember what I said about Cold Against Command being like an absolute blowout? Well, there you go. Things do not look very good for our hero. <laughs> Smack for two. Why not? I guess I could have put out the Ornithopter just in case we draw the Tempered Steel. Yeah, Coligans. Coligans. There. Those two lines are really bad. Hey, guess what? I got punished. <laughs> Could have been getting in for eight here. Alright. I don't want to put out the Stone Cold Serpent on two just because I, I don't think an Elish Norn is coming, but maybe. Maybe I should have put it out. Yeah, I probably should have. Make the Gingerbread Man unblockable. Okay, foul on the play here. You're not allowed to play Fatal Push in that kind of deck. Okay. Sure. Homunculus and Vault Scourge go into the field. Alright. So. How much... Graveyard Hate do I have to bring in because of Elish Norn? I think I'm going to bring in Glass Caskets just because Season Hall of is going to be a pain in my neck and I probably need to get rid of it. 
uh, maybe one or two relics. I don't know how into the graveyard they're going to be. But Elish Norn, certainly he's not casting that for an honest seven or eight, whatever it costs. Let's get rid of the all that glitters. I I think I gotta reevaluate all that glitters because it's just too vulnerable in this type of game. We've already seen a couple of moments when that card kind of got blown out. Maybe go down on the court homunculus, a ginger brute, and an ornithopter, just because I know. No, I like the ornithopters. I know they have fatal pushes. Everything in our deck gets hit by fatal push. So what can you do? Two of them. Try it. I need a win real bad here for my for my, you know, own personal motivation. Hand looks good. If we hit our third land. Hand looks terrible if we don't. Let's go Bowmat, and there's no reason to play the Ornithopter out now. We'll do it next turn. Yep, that is the reanimation spell that they are looking to do with Elish Norn. Ooh, chair's breaking. But they need, they need to sacrifice a creature. Okay. We missed on the land, so that's fun. We'll put out the Ornithopter this time. Just because. Tempered Steel. Hmm. Okay. You know what? After the way this night's been going, I'm going to take that one. Let's go to a wrap up. Alright, so the Tempered Steel deck, it feels good. Homunculus and Scourge are awesome cards I, I they overperformed i think for what they are of course they are still you know one cmc creature and a two cmc creature not that impactful but they did do very well in some of these games the card that i'm looking to probably cut the most is all that glitters i said it in the last game i think it's maybe a little bit too vulnerable everything else in the deck feels okay the lands also feel good although we are flooding a little bit 22 lands is not a huge amount but maybe Putting in a castle lock lane might be an idea. I don't know. I gotta look into that. Um, the deck doesn't recover very well once you kind of have put everything out. You're at the you know mercy of the top of your deck, and even the top of the deck could be like the perfect card, and it's still not that good. In the sideboard, Karn and Gideon didn't really find any place to come out. That doesn't mean that they're terrible, but maybe these slots could be better for more impactful cards. Maybe something like a protection, you know, give all destruct, uh, indestructible to all of your creatures kinds of things. I gotta look at those. Relic of Progenitus also didn't really get too much of a chance to shine. Uh, there were some graveyard strategies that we ran into, but for the most part they were kind of side strategies. We didn't run into like the full on go to the graveyard plan. So I don't know if it's still better than Tormod's Crypt or not. Don't know. Anyways, overall, I think this deck is cool. I'm going to continue playing it in my free time because I just really, really like the idea of it. And yeah, highly recommend checking it out if you're interested in it. I, it's good. It's not tier A or tier S or whatever you want to call it, it but I think it's a strong like B, B plus or 1.5, maybe 2 tier. Anyways, that's it for today. Take care. Have a good one. See you in the next one.